Great. Okay. So welcome everyone. It's a great day. Um, it's a beautiful morning here in Calgary. And I mean it. Very sunny out there. Um, I was I was talking to um, a friend some some days back, and I was telling him that it was uh, really sunny, and that the weather was very good. I told him it was um, 14, and, um, and my friend was a bit confused. Right, but for us here, yeah, 14 is 14 is beautiful, right? And and the sun is there, very tempting. Okay. That's the life we have chosen. <laughs> don't, don't pity us. Thank you. All right. Um, okay, so uh, last week uh, we, we shared a message um, that I, I, I received some good testimonies on, right? Um, about finding finding satisfaction um, and was was the story of um, Moses and how he seemed to have it all but um, obviously had some inner, inner pain that um, not, not many people could have um, um, been able to reckon with. So um, we then shared how that you, you may have those struggles, right? And that the, the most important um, of life's issues are internal. The most significant life journeys are internal. And um, it's always sensible to reach inwards first in finding solutions to whatever we face, okay? Um, today, I, I want to share a thought, um, something, I'd, um, something I started working on um, during the week. It's something I've been thinking about for a while, and then I, I just thought I should share it today. Um, and I titled it, How Faith Works. How Faith Works. Um, everyone that is a Christian um, has heard the word, um, used the word many times. Uh, you've been informed or you've been taught that you, you can't be a Christian without faith. So we, we say it a lot. Um, but sometimes we may not fully understand how it works, and that's why I want to share that today. Okay, um, I should also mention that from from June um, we will start sharing a series. Um, so it looks like for every month we'll have part one, part two, part three, part four, right? Um, just so we can stay long enough on a topic and hopefully be able to exhaust it as much as possible. Um, I'll also come up with some other, some means of engagement uh, between one Saturday and the next, just so that uh, we are all able to help one another, okay? Good. So that's, um, that's a short assignment, sorry, announcement, right? Thank you. Uh, for today, I am teaching on how faith works, and I want to quickly read from Mark chapter 11, uh, verses 23 and 24. Okay. Um, so he says, For assuredly I say to you, and this is Jesus speaking, whoever says to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things he says will be done, you will have whatever he says. Therefore, I say to you, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them and you will have them, right? Um, whatever things you ask when you pray, uh, believe that you receive them and you will have them, all right? Um, Second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7 says, uh, for we walk by faith and not by sight, right? So faith is a very significant concept in Christendom. Um, indeed, there's no Christianity without faith. Uh, Hebrews 11 verse 6 says, Without faith it is impossible to please God. He said, For whoever will come to him must believe that he exists and is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. Okay? Um, in John chapter 1 verse 18, when John was given a background to the arrival of Jesus, he said, No one has ever seen God. 
right? But the Son of God makes us know him. Of course, he was writing to people that were alive at that time, uh, but the point remained that no one has ever seen God. So if we are going to relate with him, if we are going to have encounters with him, like many of us have had, it is true faith. Sometimes you say to someone, God told me. Um, and if you want to say this, especially to a kid, then you're going to have a problem because the kid wants to know how he told you where he was, they call you on the phone and all of that, but it's by face, right? Um, some people find it difficult to um, say those words, so they would rather say something told me, right? Um, so we, we, we deal with him by face. Our salvation is deeply rooted in faith, right? Um, your salvation comes because you, you prayed to someone and you believe that the person heard you and forgave you. It is all by faith. And this actually was too complex for, for the Pharisees and Sadducees um, in the Bible to understand. Right? Um, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 8 says uh, this wisdom was too, too glorious uh, for them to understand. He said if, if they had known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. Now, um, so I say to friends many times that it's easy for us to look at the Pharisees and Sadducees of those days and um, um, laugh at them and say all sorts, but I, I understand where they were coming from. So these were people who had a covenant with God and the covenant gave them monopoly of God, right? Um, they were the only ones that had um, the right to God. Uh, in fact, when God gave them instructions, he told them they must not kill. But then he gave them victory in warfare. In other words, they were to be killing the enemies. When he says you should not kill, he's saying don't kill one of your own. In other words, they are more special than every other person. That was the way they were. It was just them, the most important people in the world. And then Jesus came in, um, and I'd like you to take time to imagine this. So one thirty-something-year-old guy comes in, and now he's saying that, well, Israelites are no longer so special, and that now you can become a member of God's family simply by saying yes to him. Now, when we read it in the Bible, it's easy for us to say, well, it's Jesus I was speaking, but at that time, it wasn't Jesus. They didn't know him as anything special, right? So for them, all they knew was this small boy is coming, and he's saying all it takes to enter God's kingdom is for you to just believe in him. Now, if I was a religious teacher at that time, I would have fought him as well, because it didn't make sense. But that's, that's our reality. That's why it is all by faith, right? These people couldn't understand it. In fact, Nicodemus, um, when he asked Jesus in John chapter 3, verse 1 to 6, um, where he asked Jesus, how can I uh, be a part of God's kingdom? Jesus said to him, you must be born again. And then um, Nicodemus had to ask, how does that happen? Do I go back into my mother's womb and get born again? Uh, it was difficult for him to understand that being born again could just be an internal thing, right? Could be something that you will see me in the morning and then by afternoon I have been reborn, just like that. Without anybody being pregnant with me for nine months, I, I can just be reborn like that. It is faith. It is big deal. It's the reason you're talking to some of your colleagues about giving their lives to Christ and they look at you and say you have been brainwashed because it is not physical, right? It's faith. All right, so, um, of course, till now, we don't know if Nicodemus got the message eventually, right? Faith is what our salvation hangs on. We have to face it. Some of us cannot say that you are nicer now than you were before you gave your life to Christ, right? But somehow you know you're saved. You know you're talking to someone. Someone's forgiving your sin. Someone's restoring you. Someone's answering your prayers. It's all by faith. That's what our salvation hangs on. And typically, um, 
whatever it was that created this new life for us is what will sustain it. So, um, Paul explained in Ephesians chapter 2 that we received our salvation through faith. He said, uh, for by faith, you have been, for by grace you have been saved through faith. He said, that's not of your works, it's uh, the gift of God. He said, it's not of works, lest anyone should boast, which is why I find it funny when people um, want to preach to other people and they are busy talking about what those people do. No, it's, it's not the doing, it is, it is the being. Right, and I, I did it a lot as a very young believer when I'd go tell somebody, Give your life to Christ, stop stealing, stop fighting. No, people cannot stop those things. Um, they, they, they may desire to stop them, but they don't have the strength to stop them. Okay, so it is connecting them to the higher life that will then give them the strength to stop whatever it is they need to stop. But that's that's an aside. Okay, so. It is by faith we have been saved. It's not by any virtuous works, right? And um, this faith is what an unsaved person lacks. Um, that ability or willingness to accept Jesus and to entrust their lives to him. Okay? That's the faith. Now, the work of faith does not stop at salvation. It is the beginning, right? It's, it's, it's like you learn a new language, you learn a new culture. The Christian life is, um, uh, the Christian culture is a culture of faith, right? So you learn a new culture and it starts um, at salvation, right? Um, but it is needed afterwards. In fact, it is more needed. In Hebrews, in Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 4, uh, God said to um, the prophet Habakkuk, he said, The just shall live by his faith. Now, the, the, the word, the Aramaic word, the Hebrew word used for just there um, is actually a popular Muslim name, Sadiq. And it also means justified. So he's saying that the justified person shall live by faith. In other words, the saved person, you and I, can only be sustained by faith. Faith is very critical. You cannot be a Christian and only live life by your natural senses. You cannot be a Christian and only see things the way every other person does. You cannot be a Christian and only be moved by sensationalism. No, there has to be something from the unseen, unseen realm um, guiding you, informing your decisions and putting the peace in your heart. Faith is very critical to a Christian. It is what everyone must live by. Okay, so when, when you read about the gifts um, of the Spirit, you see, or the ministry gifts, you see um, in Ephesians uh, chapter 4, you see that some people have the gift of faith, right? Everybody must live by faith, and then some people seem to have it more than the other people. But it is very critical. So, how then does this faith work? How exactly does it work? Because if it is something that we must live by, then it's important we understand how it works. Many times people just come up and say, oh, I have faith that this is going to happen. And you know from the start that this is not going to happen. You just know. When I started hearing about this faith thing as a young Christian, and um, uh, the, the person that taught it to me said, just declare it from wherever you are and be sure it will happen, um, and it will happen. And I had to say to the person, so is it possible I declare right away that I will be the President of the United States and it's going to happen? And then um, he didn't quite like the conversation, but yes, it's, these are conversations we must um, uh, answer, right? How exactly does faith work? I will list three things that make up faith three steps by which we can say yes we have um, launched out in faith and these steps work i assure you number one is information information romans 10 verse 17 um, which i'm sure i've quoted almost every week says faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of god right uh, faith is built on information 
Faith is built on what you know. You believe in something or in someone based on data, antecedents. When David was going to fight Goliath and Saul said, you can't do this. David said, I fought a lion, I fought a bear. And the God that helped me do those will help me take care of this giant. And then Saul allowed him. Why? Because he got new information about what the guy had been able to do before. Faith is always built on information. You want to do a business with somebody, um, you are going to ask questions. You are going to ask for um, references. You want to know who knows the person and you want to know what they know about the person. It is built on information. So when that person comes to tell you, ah, this person you want to do business with, well, I'm not saying he's a bad person. I'm not judging him. But the last time I did business with him, I lost 10 million. Then your face will change. It is built on information. We got saved because we were exposed to certain information. Someone told us something. Someone showed us something. Faith comes by what you take in. So when the Bible wrote faith comes by hearing, um, there was no YouTube. There was no TV. Right? So he couldn't have added seen. Okay? At that time, they had not even documented much. So now, the word of God that he talked about could only be heard at that time, but now it can be read, it can be seen on TV, it can be watched in movies. So, faith comes by what you take in, what you hear, what you read, what you see. And that was why Jesus did so many miracles, so that people could believe in him. He wasn't doing the miracles to shine. He was doing the miracles so that people could believe that he is the Son of God. So he would ask them many times, so do you believe? That's the idea. Faith is built on information. And if there is a new thing you desire, it is very wise to gather information that will feed your faith on that issue. Sometimes you wonder why um, churches make out time for testimonies, for people to share testimonies. Yes, it is to bring in information that will build the faith of other people. Okay, so it is very critical. In Revelations, you read there that they overcame by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimonies. Information is very critical and it works both ways. You are exposed to wrong information consistently. It's going to make your uh, face go south and then you begin to develop face in the wrong things okay and we talked um, I think it was two weeks ago about how um, many of us have lived with certain beliefs that are unfounded right but we have taken in those information enough for us to start living by them okay so you are trusting God for something is important to gather information that will feed your faith on that issue so you you read books you walk up to someone that has done such things and you ask questions just so you get more information on it. You put pictures and paste it on, on your wall or whatever it is. Um, yes, psychologists usually advise to do this. Um, some people say, well, it's what motivational speakers do, but it is something that works. Because the more you see it, the more you believe it, the more it becomes a part of you and the more you gravitate towards such things, right? Um, so it's critical and it's not just that these things will make you start feeling like you're a part of them um, it will also put fire into your prayers because then your prayer request is not ignorant so when jesus was talking about the woman that went to the unjust judge and um, jesus was teaching on persistence and he gave that um, parable about that woman that went to the judge and said um, you, know, you know what, you have to avenge me, I've been cheated. And um, Jesus said that even though the judge was not a just person, but the fact that this woman kept coming wore him out and then he answered. Now the issue is the woman was very sure 
that she was right. There's a way you talk to God when you are very, very sure that this is His will for you, when you are very, very sure that you are ripe for something. Thanks, yes, that's located. Thank you. When you are very sure you are ripe for something, there's a way you talk to God, and there's a way you keep going back. It's just like when someone is owing you money. You, you, you will go because it belongs to you. So you will keep going. And it's very much different from when you're going to beg for something. Right? So, it is important to gather those information, gather God's word, and all of those things. So when you go to God, it's easier to say, Lord, your word has said this concerning me, and I lay hold on it. Information is critical to your faith. And we must always guard it. That's why the Bible says, guard your heart with all diligence, for out of it comes the issues that govern life. First one is information, yes. And the second one is belief. Belief. In Romans 10 verse 14, Paul asks the question, how can people believe on someone they have not heard? How can they believe on him um, whom they've not heard about, right? Um, it's, it's the next level after information has come in. When information comes, then you want to either believe it or discard it. But actually, if it keeps coming at you, then you are going to believe it at some point. Okay? So, it is the belief that then makes a difference. When someone preached to you, you probably did not believe the first time, and then someone else came, and then someone else came. The point at which you said, okay, I believe you now, then a decision was made. Okay? Once information settles in your heart, belief comes. And belief is a very controlling force because it alters your state totally. So um, Jesus, in Matthew 13, verse 58, the Bible says Jesus could not do any mighty miracles in his hometown because people did not believe. It, it, it just alters everything, right? When you see someone that believes in you, even you know that your output is, is maximal. Why? Because that thing just alters your heart and you find yourself energized, right? If a person is exposed enough to some information long enough, belief comes in automatically. And that's why it's good, again, to um, open yourself to the right information. That's why it's good to listen to testimonies, listen to messages, read the Bible, um, pay attention to what you read and watch, both on the traditional media and on social media. It's critical. Social media has been a lifesaver, very entertaining, very informative, but be very conscious because at some point, belief will start coming in. Uh, there are people now who will tell you there is no decent girl anywhere. And you ask them how many ladies they have ever dated, they'll say two. So where did they get this belief from? Media. They've been reading it and all they have been reading about girls that broke somebody that some will tell you all um, evil boys are this, all this are that. Why is the information they have taken in and their belief has gone in that direction? So the day that God places a blessing for them in the hand of one of the people um, of the tribe they have uh, castigated, it has a problem. It becomes difficult to obey because now they have to go to the Igbo boy or the Yoruba girl to get something. And now they cannot connect the fact that the blessing is coming from someone that is supposedly cursed. It is very critical what you take in. You have to pay attention to it. One of the um, Bible verses that scares me the most is Matthew 6 verse 23. When Jesus said, he was talking about darkness and light. And in verse 23 of Matthew 6, he said, if the light that is in you is darkness, he said, how gross 
is that darkness. Now, um, here is an example of, of that, that statement. If the knowledge you have, because uh, light is, is, is a way of describing knowledge. Now, if the knowledge you have is bad, but you are well read in it, you know, some, some, some people can be quite sophisticated in evil. Some can, some can be well researched in the wrong things. So Jesus said, if the light that is in you is darkness, if the knowledge that you have is bad, then he said, that badness is serious. It's quite deep. Right? It's serious. I remember I was on a vacation once and I, I was in a bookstore. I wanted to pick up some books and I saw one that um, I found quite interesting. I picked the book up. So I, I, I read about the book um, front, back, before deciding if I was, I was going to pick it. It was my last card, so I, I was quite conscious of the book I was going to use that money for. And this book was um, something about what happens between when a person dies and when a person reaches the afterlife, right? Um, so it talks about certain things that happen in between that journey, right? So I picked the book, I looked at it, and then I asked myself, what do I need this knowledge for? Is it to know what I will do after how many more decades that I want to live? Is it to know how Google Map will lead me or what? So I, I dropped it and picked a nice book by a footballer. Um, and and I, I'm happy for it, right? The point is, it is not every information you take in, because the moment you take in the ones that are poisonous, then you begin to build authority in those ones. And then it becomes difficult for you to take in the right one. Which was why Jesus also explained that when a person is born again and the person backslides, it becomes difficult for the person to come back. Because again, what are you going to preach to the person? The person knows it already. The person knows it already. But the person has maybe gotten to the level where they can now use the word of God to back whatever they do. And at that level, it's difficult to preach to them. Um, one of, when I was a teenager, um, we would go from church to preach to people. And I won't forget the day I was preaching to someone that was, um, was smoking. I think it was Indian hemp or something. He was, he was really feeling himself. And I stood in front of him trying to preach to him. And every scripture I tried quoting, the guy completed it for me and interpreted it for me. What else could I do? Uh, so I, I quickly left him alone, all right, so that he would not be the one to convert me because it looked like he was going to do the conversion. So that's the point. The guy already knew these things, but he had used it to justify what he was doing. And then the light in him had turned dark. Um, one pastor I respect a lot said this to me many years ago. He said, sometimes the problem is not what you don't know. It is what you know that is not so. Right? Sometimes it's not what you don't know. It is what you know that is not so. If you don't know something, it's easy. I mean, you are empty. It's easy to put content into you. But when you know something wrong, then it means we have to first empty the content you have before putting in the new content. And that's not always easy. So, number one, be very, very particular about the information you take in. And then secondly, um, if you take it well enough, belief is automatic. So, um, I wish I could tell you to believe the information you're getting, but it's, it's natural. It will come straight away. So again, it boils down to information, okay? So yes, I did mention information, and then secondly, I mentioned your belief. And then the third one is your behavior. Your behavior. See, let's face it. Belief controls behavior. It's natural. What you believe 
will dictate how you behave and how you behave will result in what you become simple it's natural okay again um, if I say to you uh, be nicer to somebody um, that's that's on the surface it's important to know why you find it hard to be nice to the person there must be some belief somewhere either that that person will take you for granted because someone else has taken you for granted there has to be something i was in a training for a company once and they were it was um they wanted me to teach their staff on on how to work um with their bosses right how to um obviously there was a whole lot of uh, bad blood in the organization and they wanted me to talk especially to to the lower level staff uh, about how to please their bosses uh, but so naturally i mean I, I would have been expected to go there and say oh no do this uh, go to work early da, 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 da. No, but no I, I spent considerable time telling them how that their bosses are human beings with fears and that some of those fears include the loss of control um, loss of respect and all of that and that when the boss behaves in a funny way it's because they are trying to keep that control so all I explained to the lower level staff was how to help the bosses understand that they are in control and we are here for you and then they go back to me months after and they said it was working all we needed to do was change the belief of the staff that this your bosses have needs they need you maybe more than you need them. Those people felt special and they started helping their bosses. Belief will always control behavior. It's a given. Um, so there's this um, story in The Outliers, um, written by Malcolm Gladwell. Nice book, right? Um, so there was an experiment they carried out in a school. Um, so they brought in new teachers into, into the school and told the teachers in a certain class the 10 least brilliant students 10 when these new teachers came they took those 10 to the teachers and said these are the most brilliant in the class that was what they told the teachers the teachers did not know that they were the least brilliant right and then they left it at that and I think after a session, they came back, checked the results, and those 10 were the top of the class. What happened? It's simple. The teacher comes in, when he's teaching, his eyes are on the most brilliant. It's normal. When I speak to crowds, and everyone here that speaks to crowds does this. When you speak to a crowd, you are more fixated on the person that seems to be understanding you most. You are more fixated on the person that seems at your level. And when they smile and nod, you move on to another point because in your mind, everybody got it. When you look at them and they don't seem to be getting it yet, then you explain some more until you feel they get it. It's psychology. It's just normal. So those teachers would go to class and they will pay more attention to those students. Those 10. And encourage them to ask questions. And if they were not getting it, they would try to help them get it. Why? Because these are the 10 most brilliant in this class. It should not be when I came that they became dull. So the teachers worked extra hard on those ones. And then they were top of the class. Why? The belief. They came in. They were fed one information. They believed it. And they worked with it. And then it determined what they got. It's normal. So when you see someone behaving the wrong way, it is because they have believed the wrong things. And like I said before, um, you don't necessarily have to tell people to change their behavior. What you might need to do is change the information they're exposed to. And then the belief will come. And then back to you. When, when you start freaking out because things are not working, uh, when 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 you, you start going crazy, uh, it is because something has gone wrong 
with your information and your belief. Ecclesiastes 8.1 says, who is like a wise man and who knows the interpretation of a thing? He said, a man's wisdom will make his face to shine and the hardness of his face is removed. Interpretation, yes. The information you are exposed to will change everything. In 2 Kings chapter 6, verses 17 to 20, you see the story of Elisha and his servant. Um, when they were besieged by enemies, Hamish came to attack them. And um, so Elisha was there looking all calm and the servant was freaking out. And, and, and the servant said to him, Master, what's going on? We're in trouble. These people are here to kill us. And all Elisha did was pray to God and he, he didn't even pray for deliverance. He didn't pray for protection. He said, Lord, open his eyes. And the moment the guy's eyes were open, in other words, the moment he was exposed to another information, the guy calmed down. What did he see? He saw that they were surrounded by chariots and there was no way the enemies would get close. At that point, the servant would be mad outrightly dumb to still remain scared no now he has more information so when what you believed strongly before you no longer believe in it something has happened to the information you have probably dropped it or you have uh, superimposed another one on it that's it um, so Stephen Fortick um, some of us may know him someone I I listen to quite a bit um, he said, I think it was two weeks ago, he said, faith is not the lever um, by which you pull stuff. It is the lens through which you see them. And, and that was quite profound for me, right? It is, it, is, it is not what you use to change things, no. It is how you see things, okay? And the example that always comes to my mind is... So, I... I'm standing outside and um, a rat comes near me. There are people that will see a rat and pack out of the house straight. And some of you are listening to me now, right? Pack out straight because it's a threat to your life, right? There are some other people that will see a rat and all they are thinking is, I must get this out of the house, so they are busy looking for it and all that. The rat is the rat. It's, it's not, it's a rat. And that's the way life is. The situations are the same. It is the person dealing with them that determines um, the response. What you're facing is the same. Your face or lack of it is what will determine how you interpret what you're facing and if you bring God into it or not. Let's, let's pay attention to that. It's very, very critical. So, information, critical. Belief rests on it. Behavior rests on the belief. See, I should say this. Your prayer is a behavior and let's let's bear that in mind your prayer is a behavior based on your belief your worship is a behavior your giving or not giving is a behavior based on your belief which is based on your information okay let's bear it in mind your relationship with other people is a behavior what am I saying? I'm saying those things do not influence themselves. Those things do not happen by themselves. They rest on other things. Your ability to trust God is a behavior. It rests on your belief, which rests on your information. Which is why it can be very difficult for you to pray accurately if you don't read the word of God. Because your behavior is not rooted in a belief that is rooted in the information. It's critical. And it will save us many times. It's the way faith works. What am I exposed to? Because that I will believe. And once I believe it, 
then I will show it in my behavior. When I show it in my behavior, then my behavior will be consistent with the things I am asking for, the things I believe I will get. And what then happens is when the opportunity shows up, I seem best prepared to walk into it. Why? Because my behavior is built on the belief that it's built on information. It just works like that. So if there's something um, that you trust God for, somewhere that you feel your faith is failing, please pay attention to this three. Go back to that information you, you got. The information you have, it is critical. Something must have been superimposed on it. In Genesis chapter 3, when the devil went to talk to Eve, Eve said, we are not going to touch this fruit because the information we have is that the day we touch it, we will die. Satan did what? He brought in a new information, superimposed another information on it and said, no, you will not die. What will happen is that the moment you eat it, you will become like God. With that new information, Eve believed. And without even touching the fruit, the Bible says that she looked at it and she saw that it was good for food. It was delicious and she had not touched it. And it was desirable to make one wise. It's amazing what your belief will do for you. Some people have believed something. You, you've been so terrified of something. Maybe you saw a horror movie or something and then you, you, you have been so sucked into it that even with AC on, you begin to sweat. It is powerful. It can, you can believe the wrong thing and then it affects your taste, it affects your appetite, it affects everything. Yes, it's powerful. So Eve believed that and saw all that. And what happened afterwards? Behavior. She took it and ate it. And that's it. The moment the new information came and she bought into it, it was just natural. She was going to eat the fruit. So if we back up to God's word, to the right information, if you consistently take it in, then it affects your belief, it affects your behavior. I jokingly say to people that you won't hear me praying about long life. No. Why? Because I have enough information to believe that I, I won't die before my time. Therefore, it shows in my behavior. It shows in my prayer. I do not have any doubt that I'll be taken care of. Why? Because I have enough information to feed my belief that I'll be fine. And it shows in my behavior. So when you find yourself behaving erratically, you find yourself behaving like a non-Christian, please go back to the information you have and that will change things for you. So like I said, if your information is correct, your belief will be sound. And if your belief is sound, your behavior will be a fruit. Okay? All right. Um, ladies and gentlemen, that's my, that's my charge for you today. Um, like I said, in a few weeks, we start teaching um, a series so that we can go deeper and deeper into um, God's Word. Can we pray together? Um, yes, let's, let's pray. See, in um, 1 John chapter 1, verse 1, John was saying to his audience that he's not, he's not just talking, he's talking about his encounters uh, with Christ. In other words, I'm, I'm, I'm writing about things I know. This, this one is not wash. I know, right? Uh, Peter also said it in 1 um, uh, Peter 1, 19. He said we 
117, they said we, we are not following cunningly devised fables, right? They said we were witnesses on the mountain, right? Um, where these things happen. In Ephesians 117, Paul said that I pray for you that um, God will, will fill you with the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. I, I feel we need to pray this morning for fresh encounters with God. Your behavior when you gave your life to Christ 10 years ago was probably different. You probably had less fears. You probably were happier than now. Now, some information has overridden it. Life has happened to you, right? Um, just like the story of Eve, another information has overridden that. And now I want us to pray so that God, again, super imposes himself on every other thing we know. I want you to pray, Lord, give me a fresh encounter with you. All right, lift your voice and, and pray. Father, I want a fresh encounter with you. I want to know you again. I, I, I want to know you um, clearly. I want you to be real to me more than ever before. Lord, I, I, I want you to be real to me more than the news I read, more than the people around me. I want you to be real to me more than the fears I feel, more than the troubles I'm going through. Lord, I, I want an encounter with you, something, something strong, something unforgettable, something that will help me to say consistently that I even if I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil because you are with me. Lord, I want an encounter. Something, something that is assuring, something that's assuring, something that I cannot get away from, something that I cannot be deceived about. Lord, give me an encounter this week in the name of Jesus. Let me hear your voice. Let me feel your touch in the place of prayer. Bring your word to pass in my life. Give me an encounter in the name of Jesus. Give me... Uh, a, a, a new revelation of you. Help me to see you in a new way. In the name of Jesus. Lord, touch me this week. Touch me this week. People gave you names. Lily of the Valley, Rose of Sharon. They, they, they called you El Shaddai, Elohim, Rafa, because of the encounters they had with you. Lord, give me an encounter this week. And let my life not remain the same. In Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Um, secondly, um, so I did mention that prayer is a behavior. Okay, it's um, and 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 that's why you will be in some meetings. They will raise some prayer points, and you you won't be able to say that. Why? Because those prayer requests. Um, and not in consonance with your belief, right? Um, personally, I, I, I won't be in a meeting where I'll be praying against my enemy and praying that someone dies, personally, based on my revelation. Okay, so prayer is a behavior um, in response to your belief. And so I want us to practice that behavior now. Um... I want us to make declarations, okay, about your life, your family, your health, your finances, your mind. In Numbers 14, 28, God said to Moses, he said, go and say to those people, as you have spoken in my hearing, so will I do to you, okay. So now I want you, if you have believed the information that if God is for you, no one can be against you. You have believed that God takes pleasure in the prosperity of his servants. You have believed that God is your shepherd and you will not want. Then let it show in your behavior now. I want you to lift your voice and begin to declare concerning every area of your life. I want you to begin to declare what you want in the name of Jesus. There's an assurance that testimonies will come from this meeting and I want you to declare. The Bible says with the heart man believes unto righteousness, with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. I want you to begin to declare right now. Death and life, Bible says, are in the power of the tongue and those that love it will eat the fruit thereof. Father, I declare at this time that it is well with me. The word says, say to the righteous, it shall be well. So I declare it is well with me. You said, let the redeemed of the Lord say so, whom he has redeemed from the hands of the evil one. And I declare, 
I am redeemed by the blood of Jesus. No evil will become who will come near me. No plague will come near my dwelling in the name of Jesus. So I declare that my life is hid in Christ, in God. My family is safe. It is well with all of us. No sickness, no pestilence will come near any of us in the name of Jesus. I declare that everyone connected to me is happy, is safe, is well in the name of Jesus. I declare my health is perfect. The health of everyone around me is perfect. My finances are sound. I declare I walk into a season of favor. Good news on every side. Blessings on every side. In the name of Jesus, I declare my mind works perfectly. In the name of Jesus, I declare I live above fear. I live above anger. I declare peace in the name of Jesus. Peace in my heart. Peace in my home. In the name of Jesus, I declare wisdom that I make the right decision. I go to the right places. I am delivered from error. In the name of Jesus, I declare that I'm a sheep and the Lord is my shepherd. And my father, my shepherd, will not allow me to get into danger. So all my ways are safe. All I do is good. In the name of Jesus, I declare an end to backsliding. And I declare my soul is pure restored in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. And Lord, I pray for everyone here that has listened to this message that will watch later. I pray, Lord, touch their hearts. If there's anyone backsliding, it's because the information they had before, they've thrown it aside and they have another one. Lord, touch their hearts again. Fill their heads again with your word in the name of Jesus. I, I pray for that person here who gets angry and destroys things. And I pray now that you are delivered in the name of Jesus. I pray for that person who has been under the bondage of fear. You've been afraid. You don't even know what you're afraid of. The Lord, I declare your peace in that person's heart in the name of Jesus. And that there's someone here that is afraid to sleep at night because you are afraid of death. I declare you will live long and you will live well in the name of Jesus. This new week we are getting into, I declare it's a week of favor. It's a week in which God's children will be revealed. Bible says once I was young, now I'm old. I've never seen the righteous forsaken, but they're still begging bread. I declare you will not beg, you will not lack in the name of Jesus. Lord, I pray, let your word grow in everyone's heart. Let us all have an encounter with you this week. And Lord, let it be clear, even to the enemy, that we are your sons. We thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Um, so that's it. Thank you very much, everyone. Um, I'd like to say a big thank you to everyone that has been sending in testimonies. Um, yes, again, it's information that I need, right? Yes, testimonies are powerful. Right? It's uh, useful information. So please, uh, you have a testimony, please um, send them in. Um, you can send me private messages on Facebook, YouTube, um, Instagram. You can send me an email. Um, it's tolacity at gmail.com. So you can you can send it. Someone said mine is next. I believe you. Yes. Um, so please just keep them coming. Okay. Thank you very much. So we'll be back here this uh, same time next week. Um, and then we're still working on some form of engagement um, during the week. The desire, I should say this, my desire is to help everybody grow in God, right? There's no Superman anywhere. All of us get to know God more and more. So every opportunity we have, we'll be sharing just so that we all get um, stronger and stronger in God, all right? So that's that's it uh, from me for now. Thank you very much for logging on. See you next week. Again, you can tell your friends I'll post this on YouTube in a few hours, and then you can please go there, subscribe, and then uh, watch, watch the videos, right? Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Love you all.